you have posited that a superhuman mind, so if we realize AGI or, and then quickly on the heels of AGI, ASI, that superhuman mind might perceive itself as a collection of patterns and subsystems rather than as a singular entity. Um, and then it also seems like uh, the way that you've been describing in this interview, as well as um, as well as in other talks that you've given in the past, papers that you've written, that you and I, who <laughs> primarily perceive ourselves because we have passports and driver's licenses today that say our name on them, and you know that the face in those passport photos looks r- roughly the same, even over a ten-year span. So we kind of have this sense of of an individual it's even literally there in the name (laughs) i am an individual you're an individual we can't be divided but in fact we are just made up of biological material some of it comes and goes like the ship of theseus and we also like you mentioned you know the mind viruses like we do have some of our own thoughts that happen to somehow materialize but most of what we think and most of what we do is influenced by experiences that we've had and other thoughts that have infected our brains. And so, yeah, so the, the idea of me, John Crone, or you, Ben Gertzel, as being this indivi- indivisible individual is nonsense. Um, and yeah, so, so, I, think, yeah so. I think, I mean, there's many possible kinds of intelligences, right? And they're what kind of mind a certain AI system becomes has to do with what the AI system is is doing, what experience it has. Now, our our experience predominantly is controlling this this body in, in the world, and so we naturally att- attach our experience to to that. Then, when you when you talk to people who have meditated in, intensively for long periods of time you find they often come to conceptualize themselves differently and they sort of, they don't center their experience around a sort of psychosocial self anymore. They experience, their experience is like there's this set of clusters of behavior patterns and, and then some of these behavior patterns have some, you know, models that they concoct for some temporary purpose associated with them. And that's right. that's a different way of organizing ex- experience than the way that most people have in their ordinary state of, of consciousness. Right now, if you're if you're an AI system, you may land in that sort of state of consciousness right from the get go, because even if you're controlling a body like a Sophia robot or an avatar in Sophiaverse, I mean the same AI system can control a lot of bodies at once. Or, I mean, you can save knowledge from one body, reload it in, a, in, a, in another body. And it can also do stuff like read the web or prove a billion math theorems that are unrelated to being stuck in a body, but they're just crunching data on some machine. So it would seem likely that the most natural way for an AI system, if it's based you know, in Azure Compute Cloud or on SingularityNet Decentralized Compute Cloud, right? the most natural way for that AI to experience itself would be more like the more like enlightened advanced humans, more like just, okay, there's a set of clusters of behavior patterns that have different sorts of models and capabilities associated with, I mean, for humans to come to look at it that way, we have to let go of a lot of ego and social conditioning, but for, for an AI to look at it that way, might be very natural just because the AI is not attached to a given body like in, 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 the, in, the, in the first place. And this is actually one of the reasons I'm optimistic on, on AI ethics. I mean, I think most people actually have a good sense of what is the ethical thing to do by standard human ethical judgment. And this is why chat GPT is so good at answering ethics questions. Like given situation, what's the right thing to do? It's very good at figuring that out. And I think almost all humans are also. The problem with ethics isn't that humans don't know what our common sense says is ethical. The problem is that we would often rather do what's good for ourselves or or our tribe instead of what we think is is good for the whole. And 
I mean, me too, in various points in my every everyday life. I'm I'm not a perfect hum, human either. Now, an AI system can have the same sense of what is ethical that we do, and you can see ChatGPT already embodies that sense in its own way, even though it's not a moral agent. It has a good ability to answer ethics questions, right? Then, but the AGI doesn't have to have a selfish or a tribal interest unless we program it and, and, and condition it to. It could come it could come right out of the box with sort of general common sense of ethics as it, as its main driver. We just have to configure it that way, right? I mean we're we're defining what is the top level goal of the of the AGI system. We evolved to fight to survive and we have to work to overcome that. Like right right now if I'm in a really good mood, I take everything blissfully and calmly. If I'm in a bad mood and someone points out something I did that was wrong or stupid, like there's some anger that rises up inside me. I'm like, fuck you, why are you saying that? And I mean, I I just damp, tamp that down and let that like float past before it takes control of me because I'm 56 years old. I'm not five years old, right? But but we all we all have that, right? I mean, we evolve with that. You don't have to program that into the into the AI, right? We we should not do so. Now we could if you want to build military robots, and if you're building like a corporate sales AI, you may build into it that its motivation is, ha ha, I figured out how to extract all this guy's money by selling him crap he doesn't need. I mean, you could build AIs with that motivation, but we don't have to. We could build an AGI with a motivational system to like do do what the average person would think is the most beneficial, loving, and compassionate thing in this situation. And if we program the AI to have that as its goal, it will do it. And it will probably then evolve a quite sort of enlightened, unattached in, 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 in inner life, which, which is almost natural if you're a mind that's not by design attached to any one body infrastructure or, or, or hunk of, of, of matter, right? So this gets into why I'm optimistic about the potential for beneficial AGI and why decentralized is important because centralization of control tends mm -hmm. to bring with it some narrow motivational system separate from, from the, the ethics of what's best for everyone.